It's time for Serial Viewing! Welcome to our 31st episode. Hello, Jeremy. Hey, man. Hello, Jennifer. Hello. This week, we watched Baker Groove. Baker Groove. Groove, which ran from 1989 to 2006. 18 series. 18 series for a total of 344 episodes. Uh, it is set in the biker area of Newcastle upon Tyne. It centres on the Biker Grove Youth Club. Aimed at an older teenage and young adult audience, it often tackled serious and sometimes controversial storylines. We watched episode one from the depths of 1989, <laughs> uh, where Biker Grove is the place to be. When Judy's family move from London to Newcastle, she calls the city a horrible dump, but then she meets the crowd at Biker Grove. Why, hey, man? <laughs> she falls in love with Gil. <laughs> she loves Gil. She loves Gil. And if I'm not, like, mistaken, I think she gets pregnant by Gil. If I'm not remembering. Well, but we'll go straight. Yeah, this was even edgier and more alternative than uh, Grange, Grange Hill was. Hill. Was it? This had it all. Yeah, this had uh, brain, uh, brain. Yeah, there was a brain tumor, suicide, pregnancies, drugs, racism, uh, racism. You well, name it. It was all that. there. Yeah, I, I was. Oh, shocked. and at least every other episode, one of them was trying to break out into the uh, pop industry. Because it wasn't just the famous duo, there are loads of them. I have notes. <laughs> I have yeah, notes. there are loads of yes. them trying to be famous. So, Jeremy, have you ever heard of Biker Grove? Uh, loosely. I knew it was where Anton Deck came from. It was. Yes, there, there you go. This, is Anton, this, this, this show is responsible for Anton Deck being forced on the UK public for the last 20, 30 years. This is where they made their money. It really is. <laughs> yeah. Let's get ready to rumble. It, it, it wasn't from their pop career, let's put it that way. <laughs> well, no, that's what made them famous. I hate to say it. That's where, they, that's where they got their first bank balance, which then allowed them to make their own production company, which is where they have made some serious bank. And then get, become alcoholics and drive their car into the side of the road. <laughs> well, to be fair, I think it's Declan. I think I've got it right way around. Ant's the one that's yeah that struggled. I think Declan's the one that's kept uh, hold of the steering wheel and is the one that's both made sure hands financially, on the way. yeah, <laughs> financially they're both going in the right direction. Mm. I think that he's the boy that. And when he first comes on Biker Grove, I-, I thought he was in the first episode, but he's not. Oh God, no, he doesn't join till quite late. <laughs> well, no, when he when he first comes on. They're, he, they're, they're so, he's so young, he's only about 10 or 11. So he's like Winston. They're, <laughs> they're really young. Although it may seem it, kids, alcoholism isn't a joke. So this was the very first episode. This was the setup. The first series pretty much centred on Julie and her moving, moving to Newcastle and her, you know, getting to, get to grips with uh, this the new bitch. cred. Julie the bitch. She's a spoiled little cow. Yeah, she's not the only sport <laughs> one. Uh, so this first episode, it's her moping around a shopping centre with her absolute drip of a father. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know when they were when they were walking around when they first came into that shopping centre, and he's going, he's going, oh, and it's just it's just like London, and it was like I was like, is this like some like Queen's Gate advert? Oh, you can get Sears, <laughs> you can get all the shops you get from in it's London, the largest, but l- in Newcastle, it's the largest up north, <laughs> and they in all Europe. prefabs. <laughs> they don't just it's make the same shopping, shopping center, center the same like it's everywhere mass- though. they all look the same though <laughs> they all have that same marbled floor that's really smooth but does like makes your sh- shoes squeak and it's got the little specks in it that are different colored well it's weird <laughs> but when i when we were watching that bit it made me think of um it made me think of um in stranger things when they're in yeah. the mall and i was thinking yeah. you know actually weirdly for a British mall in Newcastle, it looked very much like a 1980s American mall. Um, yeah. You know, it's that, got that same centre. And um, if anybody who's watching this grew up, Peterborough, Queensgate was exactly the same. You had your it big really fountains was. in the middle. You had a couple of escalators. And it was just that same weird cream beige colour with lots of lights. And they Has all it had changed this- much. <laughs> 
No. Since then. No. <laughs> they all had the same shops. A new look, a top shop, a top man, uh, Dorothy Perkins. They've got all um, those shops in Brighton too. <laughs> yeah, they, they were all chains. There was never any like, um, you know, they all had a John Lewis and a Debenhams, uh, a CNA, BHS, yep. Marks and Spencers. Every single shopping centre. But that had, in Newcastle, I noticed in the background, that had a Sears. Now, really? we, nev- we never had Sears or anything down here. I don't remember there being a Sears. No, it said in the background it had Sears, and I was like, I was really surprised because I was like, wait, did they did they record that in an American? <laughs> <laughs> it's like what? Sears is an American. It's an American depart like heart, the department store. It used it? To, yeah, 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 yeah. That's exactly what it was. Yeah, I don't think they exist anymore. I think Sears has gone. I think it has. Yeah, in the last couple of years, but mm, I get confused between Sears and stuff like Macy's. They're all well. Macy's all is Macy's are more of a clothing. And Macy's is like our Debenhams, right? Uh, yeah. Well, it depends where you are in the country. But Macy's, Foley's. But they are. They're more like they are big Dillard's. department stores. Sears is probably a bit more. Um, John Lewis. Cheaper. No, no, cheaper. So. Yeah. Anyway, sorry. <laughs> <We're dragging laughs> <back>. <laughs> we, we followed Julie moping around the thing, and then she gets dropped. Did anyone? Right. So you've moved to a new city. She's mm. obviously spent some time in school because she mentions later in the episode that she's she's met some some kids from school, and then her dad's like, "Right, I'm going to take somebody at work told me about this bike at Grave Place. I'm going to drop you off, and you're going to love it, bitch." So yeah, he pulls up, basically pushes her out of the car, and then drives off. She's like, like at the bottom of a driveway. She's never been there before. No idea what time to pick her up. She kind of walks up to her and goes, "Is this bike at Grove?" The poor girl doesn't even know where she is. <laughs> Oh, and that shows that shows your tender, loving care. In the eighties, nobody <laughs> gave a shit about what you were doing. They threw you out the car, and that's off you. Go. Now, as parents, we would go up to the door and we'd make sure that Jeff and oh, I've forgotten what her name is. Anna, is it? Who's the chick that runs it with Jeff? I've no idea what her name is. She was immediately remember. forgettable. Jesus, what was her name? Um, <laughs> her entire anyway. her entire role. Was to look just like slightly down her nose and like just like, mm, do you need some well, help? She was mm. supposed to be the young, cool, um, the one that the girls can go to because Jeff obviously is just one up from paedophile. Oh, Jeff. Je- no, 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 no. Jeff had the sweetest mustache ever. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Jeff Best was mustache. awesome. <laughs> it was fantastic. Jeff was awesome. But obviously, in the <laughs> 80s, you had to be careful about middle aged men that hang out with kids. And, um, so now we would be doing background checks on everybody that was going in. We would be in the building. We would be there for the first session. And we'd be making sure everybody was okay. In the 80s? No. How he did it, that's how we used to do it. We got chucked out of the bottom of the thing. Off you go. I'll see you in two hours. Off your plod. Well, they did a pretty good job of introducing us to all of the main characters. You've yeah. got uh, uh, Spuggy. <laughs> was- so this was... <laughs> I was going to go on, go on, sorry. I have no idea no. any of the names for any of these characters. Spuggy, she, right, I'm going to, I apologise because I'm sure she's a lovely person, but she was the little potato looking girl. <laughs> Red right. hair. She's Donna's little right sister. Right hair. Right. Looked yeah. a bit like a potato, shoved tennis balls up her t-shirts. Yeah. <laughs> and unfortunately. Because I haven't got boobs yet. <laughs> she doesn't get better. <laughs> Spuggy, I think she's in nearly the entire run. She did. She stayed in it for like God knows, like twenty years. I think she was running it by the end of it. So but she was very sporty. So she never becomes really girly. Um, hence yeah, the tennis it was really weird, actually. <laughs> um, it was really weird because watching that first episode, it was like I was hanging out with some old friends that I hadn't seen for decades i do you know what's funny so i haven't seen biker growth since i was a teenager since i yeah. this was out i've not yeah. watched. I've, i didn't know it had gone on until 2006 i had no idea as soon as spuggy and donna walked around the screen it's like oh my god i remember them <laughs> it's well, it's, like, yeah it's nickler nick nickler was the one that um i really like uh gelled with um, she was, I was dark haired and yeah, yeah. like, and my best mate had red hair and was quite a spoil. She was quite spoil and, you know, and her dad had this amazing job, which wasn't actually that amazing. And we need to, we need to talk about the boys. The three, oh, the no three, God, oh my God, the boys, the, the three main boys in this. So <laughs> Cass, sure. Nobody, no, I don't care where you are in the country. Nobody got the nickname Cass as a Casanova. 
because he's a bit of a ladies' man, and he wasn't. <laughs> in in Newcastle as well. No, no, <laughs> no. I refuse to believe it. Yes, in Newcastle, it would never have got the name Casanova or Cass for Casanova. No, he would have got like his sl- real name's like Graham Slapper. <laughs> Or something. <laughs> yeah. He's slut. Yeah. yeah. So we've, we've got Cass, who's got the um, he's got the personality of a wet newspaper. Yeah. He's just kind of there. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I can do thirty-five. Thirty-five. Yeah. Doesn't say thirty-five. What? Thirty-five peanuts. Yeah. I know he was fifty-five. He was 50. the record was thirty-five. He could do thir- fifty-five, and Gil Gil could do sixty-five. So, we, so we, hang on, let's oh, get yeah. back to we're going to come back. So we've got Cass, and then we've got Winston. Who mm. one of the girls calls? So there's Winston and Gil. Winston's yep. the younger lad, and he he's described as uh, Gil's monkey because <laughs> he's well. always just kind of there. But, but did it, he did he had a little file of facts? He he gave Spuggy a job out of it. And yeah, t- did you so see that? Yeah, he was he's a little, little Northern entre- Dell boy. Yes, he was a little entrepreneur, and he um he goes he goes on if I remember. He's actually, he, he doesn't, he's always really little, but he, yeah, he's a little entrepreneur. <laughs> he's always giving out jobs to people. That's he gets weird, jobs man. and then he gives them out to people. That's weird. <laughs> but he takes a cut of it and he's always got money. And then he's Still like, he's took commission, didn't he? <laughs> and then Gil's like, he's like, I don't know. I, don't, I, I can't yeah, remember if they're brothers or not, or cousins or something. I assume they're brothers. I didn't get the no. I didn't get the relationship. I there didn't at get all. their brothers, but there must be some sort of relationship for Gil to allow such a young. I don't know. I can't remember. Yeah, because he was getting pissed off with them, but he still hung out with them. Yeah. So Gil, he's supposed to be a bit of a bad boy. Yeah. <laughs> you can tell, mm. and you could tell he was a bad boy because he was wearing a leather jacket. Yeah, with he reminds badge, me of somebody with badges on the front of it. <laughs> it was uh, Gil. Blonde hair. Gil. Gil. Wait, not Bill, wait. Gil. It's Gillespie. Oh, hang on, wait, wait. Gillespie. So, yeah, his last name's Gillespie, so they call him Gil. Bad boys, they steal those bikes. And then oh, they yeah. ride them <laughs> round in circles. <laughs> Let's ride in circles, lads. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> One of the first things I say is when she comes out with her boring our dad and she comes in a car park and I'm like, Oh, let's ride our bikes round and round in circles. <laughs> That's what I'm literally that let's ride. Like so much fun. But- so There's a whole co- fucking car park you could be spanning around in. And you're gonna go. But she comes out and you can tell they're bad guys because you get the, ba- the bad guy beat. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> Whatever it was. I can't remember what it was. But it's like, oh, they're so much. Uh, it was like, he, he, he clocks onto Julie when she first arrives and she's all like, all right, love. And that wasn't the accident. And he, says, and he tries to impress this, this skinny little string bean of a dude. Look what I can weight lift. Yeah, that's not impressing. That's literally never impressed anyone. <laughs> <laughs> no one ever has looked at you and gone, No, yeah, well, girl. Well, well, it seemed to work. Up. It seemed Although, to work. <laughs> yes, it's the oldest story in the book. The rich, posh girl goes yeah. for bad boy, poor boy. But he, you, can't say, you can't say bad boy without doing the, the, the ears on either yeah, side. He, of that, <laughs> he really isn't. <laughs> nah, he just stole a moped. I mean, he steals my uh, steals a moped, they, they, and then they're driving them around, and she's like, "Oh, stop them!" So I can watch them. Although she was a posh girl, so she, oh, mother, please stop. Mother, so please I can stop. Watch the boys so, go round and round in circles. Oh, and then they crash. We'll jump. Yeah, we'll jump to the end of the episode. So her mum's giving her a lift home, and they, she pulls past <laughs> just after Gil and Winston have just randomly nicked some bikes outside yeah. a pub, <laughs> some little mopeds, and they're they're tear arsing around this field, and then they decide to play chicken. First one just swerves a chicken, so they come bombing at each other. And you're like, it's obvious it's now obvious what's going to happen. We're going to teach a lesson in the very first one, and then there's a crunch. Mother kind of carefully shields her eyes in a very gentle way, and Julie's like, <gasps> and they both die. And I couldn't give yeah. a shit <laughs> as a viewer. <laughs> I couldn't care less if they'd actually. <laughs> I wanted to see what state the bikes were in. Sod them. <laughs> <laughs> It doesn't seem like they're uh, related at all. Um, they've got different last names. I can't see any relation. Doesn't say anything. So I think they're just... Uh, just they just tolerate. He's just a monkey. There's just, just a symbiotic relationship they have. <laughs> and and to, just to prove what a bad boy he is, as a 15-year-old uh, in 1989, he sparks up a fag in the... Uh, in the uh, sorry, a cigarette for American listeners inside the youth, inside the youth club. Oh. And he even smokes it like that disrespects authority he sticks it to the man and then he gets yeah. <laughs> and then yeah Jeff tells him either it goes out or it goes out so he goes out in a storm 
So Jeff done, wins anyway. I've done crap bigger than you, son. Get out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, to be honest, I mean, the balls on Jeff must be huge because that boy, <laughs> uh, it, like that man in... I can't. I don't think he's there in the end because I think he gets ill. Like he, he d- yes, no, he no, he doesn't get ill. He dies in the eleventh series. He Jeff gets does, blown yeah. up. Yeah, he gets blown up in a gas explosion. Oh what? God, yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> that's uh, rem- uh, that's bringing Jesus back some memories. Christ. <laughs> yeah, but eleven series, and uh, there's that man puts up with the shit of teenagers. <laughs> I mean, you honestly. Whoever, mm. any person that runs youth groups has just... They're they just, des- honestly, They just deserve respect because yeah. they're, not, they're not human. There's something not- <laughs> to, to deal with a bunch yeah. of hormonal teens. Ah. As a parent of teenagers, there is no way I would run a youth club for teenagers. Right, well, to, we'll touch on that because the, the show, they made a point of showing things, like making sure that life was unjust for a lot of the characters. Mm-hmm. Bad things happen to everybody, not just bad people. Uh, some girl died from brain tuna, a tuna, a brain fish, brain a brain tumor. <laughs> <laughs> Which one is it that dies from a brain tumor? Flora. Girl called Flora dies from a brain tumor. Someone called Greg falls off the roof of the actual grove and is paralyzed from the waist down. I Gemma Dobson. Gemma Dobson is electrocuted by a faulty electric main socket. Yeah, I remember that one as well. And youth leader Jeff Keegan is blown up. Yeah, and don't forget. May I don't come No, 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 not yet, not yet, not yet, not yet. <laughs> <laughs> Why did they decide this for the show? It had to be real. I, I will say something here, right? So I was 13 when this first came out. And even though looking at it now, it was a little bit lame. It was lame, <sighs> but it was nowhere near as lame as bloody Grange Hill. Grange Hill was just, Grange Hill was came, kind of, it was like the BBC trying to do Teenage. So it wasn't. It quite... does seem like the more straight edge version of this. This is more yeah. like it's Newcastle, so we can do what we want. Yeah. So <laughs> also, as a Southern Jesse, it was a bit like, oh, it's a bit different because no it... one I went to school with knew this. But also, I have um, quite a lot of Northern relatives who come from Middlesbrough, Newcastle, and all around that area. So it was kind of. It was actually. It was quite. As I said. Watching this, it was like going back and a f- it was like a, a friend's reunion. And I mean, like the the North became popular in the early 90s, thanks to yeah. like, stuff like Oasis and, and that's what Britpop made. Yeah. So it makes a lot of sense that it became sort of big cultural explosion. It was right, different. It was edgy because it was diff because it was different. Yeah. But I will say there was a lot of things that reminded me of being a teenager in the 80s when they were coming out of the um oh, the, the, the 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 a shopping center i'm not going to call mm-hmm. it a mall because we're british the shopping center those pink and white uh sports bags that they were they had <laughs> they were like so unbelievably fashionable i was one of those teenagers that kind of bucked fashion so as like all my mates would be like oh yeah we've got to do this we've got to do that and i'd be like yeah no way, I'm going to wear black. And You're a nerd. I'm going to have DMs. And no, not a nerd. <laughs> Alternative. Edgy. It was grunge. Punk. When <laughs> I was a teenager. Anyway, at 13, I was madly into Madonna anyway, so we went in together. <laughs> um, but all the girls, those pink, and that, that was literally like, boom, smack in my head. I was just like, Jesus Christ, I remember all of my mates having those. And then the trainers, it was, yeah, it was oh, yeah. definitely fashionate. I mean, the, the leather jacket that Gil wears, somebody who is on this podcast had one very similar did with not, I, badges. I, I had, I did not, I had no badges. I had a <laughs> proper biker's jacket. <laughs> Whatever. Purchased from a proper biker because I wasn't a proper biker. That was a proper biker's jacket. Don't give me that crap. Anyway, right. anyway, why do they spell it with a Y? Because uh, it's from the biker area of Newcastle. Oh, and that was something else. When I watched this, I thought that was made up. I didn't think Biker Grove yeah, or too. Biker I, was a real place. It does sound in made Newcastle. up. Yeah. yeah, I thought it, it was made up as well. Until I was a lot older, and I realised the biker was actually a real place, and I was like, "Holy crap!" It a youth, a youth, a youth, a youth. 
what you call it a youth group. club in a castle yep. thing <laughs> that was really cool i wanted to go there um i found out uh doing the research for this episode <laughs> i didn't know yes. i thought it was completely oh made my up. god right so this show was created by two people, one of whom I have a great deal of respect for. This is by Adele Rose, who was the longest-serving writer on UK Soap Coronation Street. And Jay Straczynski. <laughs> yeah, Jay, yeah, Michael <laughs> Jay Straczynski. <laughs> yeah. And uh, somebody called Andrea Wonfor. Now, Andrea Wonfor uh, is responsible for bringing possibly the greatest collection of TV shows to British television ever. She was a helped producer of The Tube. Do you remember The Tube, Jennifer? Yep, yep. Uh, Euro, Euro trash, yeah. <laughs> the Big Breakfast, and possibly the greatest TV show to ever grace British television, y- The Word. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, no wonder it was good then because that's, <laughs> yeah. that's some pretty good stuff. All of those. Uh, they Jeremy's pre- looking at us weird now. Yeah, you really should look up the word <laughs> on YouTube. The Go word is fucking it was. It was. You couldn't repeat it. It wouldn't work these days, but it was the most off the wall, chaotic, anarchic TV show you've ever seen. Well, it kind <laughs> like a game of, show. Or? It kind of was a um, um, an evolution of of the two. Is it the tube? Did you say? Yeah. Anyway, so the word. <laughs> it was a you'd you'd have uh, like uh, TV stars, movie stars would go on there. You'd have music. You'd have uh, famous for fifty, famous for five minutes, where they'd get a member of the the audience and get them to do something disgusting just to put them on TV, like lick a sweaty man's armpit or eat a, so put a slug like on your tongue. Vine and TikTok for nowadays, kind of. But it was they had a loose, they had a loose like a script of what the show was going to be like. Half the guests were absolutely off their head on drugs or shit faced. The, the crowd, were. the crowd were just like they were there. They were pressing in on everything. It, you, you, anything, literally anything, could happen. <laughs> and I used to, we used to. It was live on a Friday night, and if someone took their top off, someone had got their todder out, the cameramen would all like fight each other to get like the best shot. It was run by people your age, or it was presented was by people. A uh, channel four, channel, channel four. four so yeah. there you wouldn't was... get away with it on any <laughs> no. other channel. It had to be channel four. And it was all by your age, and everybody was drunk or they were stoned there, literally, or out of the skull. Everybody in that studio, including the people, but the cameramen, the people up in the booth, they were there to have fun. Yeah, <laughs> and it was just and nobody was, gave a shit, and it was it really was, good. We need more media like that. Yeah, it was amazing. Channel Four has got right up its own arse, and it won't do anything like that. But when it was first started, I mean, some of the things that you used to watch on there were fucking hilarious and it was it was just it was just a really good laugh and, and then of course you get you know you get your old mary white houses involved oh yeah yeah it was um, constantly getting like threatened and threatened it was to take like, off the whatever air. it's channel four switch it off it if was, you don't want to watch it i i lived for the word on a friday night so i used to watch it on a friday night and then record the good bits because they'd repeat it on a saturday night At what age? watch it live oh i must Ooh. have been 17 hmm. whenever it was but you see, what they used to do is they used to do it live 16. Friday night, yeah. which you would get everything. And then what they would do is they'd cut it for the sensible version on a Saturday. <laughs> so the live Friday night. And of course, we would, I don't know about Henry, but I'd be watching it with the volume down really low. Oh, so no. So my mum no. would not know that I was watching that. <laughs> Seven, 17, I had I probably pretty much ruled the TV room on a Friday night. Everyone else was gone. It was mine. Oh, you were, you were with you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, anyway, they dated that. Uh, <laughs> they produced a single episode pilot in 1988 where the kids were all between 8 and 11. Um, it was changed for 12 to 16 for the actual show. It was, it was, they were going to bring it up and make it a bit older. Mm-hmm. And the first series centred on young teenagers crossing into adulthood. Can uh, I so just, coming of age. Can I just say, so the word was on from the time I was 14 to the time I was 19. So that's I, like I, right in that cusp. So, so you 15. would have been 15 to 20. All right, so I probably started watching it very quietly. <laughs> <You're not running. laughs> yeah, we would have been watching that late. We would definitely. Oh, yeah, so they, they could. And then they, they, they thought it'd be better if the kids were older because they wanted to tackle stuff like uh, drug addiction, child abuse, homelessness, pregnancy, homophobia, abortion, all that, all that usual stuff. Uh, they deliberately took it out, like un- unlike a lot of uh, teen dramas at that time. 
they're never shown in school. It never happens. You you never see anything happen. It's always in the grove or somewhere else. Uh, Or a foster home in later series. Uh, They didn't shy away from showing the repercussions of their stupidity, like jumping off a roof and stuff like that. Uh, Some people stole stolen joyride cars. Well, they crashed and some people died in them. Uh, A gill actually dies in a car crash after joyriding. Oh, in series God. two, right? Uh, uh, yeah, one of one of the other kids uh, runs over someone else on a joyride, uh, and then right, this is this is so. Ant and Deck. If you don't know who Ant and Deck are, they are staples of British te- television. They are these two young ladies. They started on Biker Grove, and they've gone on to present. They've won like awards for like ten years in a row. They are they're huge. I can't. We can't. They are, they are pervasive in in British television. X Factor, Brit- well, no, Britain's Got Talent. They're on that. They're on. Uh, uh, they're all, I'm a celebrity. Get me out of here. They they yeah. had yeah. the, the Ant and Deck show, um, Deck show, all that kind of stuff. So they play two car- characters called PJ and Duncan. <laughs> and now this is something that every now and again I will shout at Jenny. <laughs> I'm going to do it. I have to do it just to make her laugh because they go paintballing, unsupervised paintballing. Now you can't take your goggles off when you go paintballing. But PJ does. He takes off his goggles and then in a fluke accident, he managed to get shot in both eyeballs <laughs> at the same time and he is permanently blinded. But he's staggering around with this paper goes, Oh, don't couldn't be eyes. <laughs> you can't see. You can't see. I didn't think it was I'm permanent. I'm going to watch it right it was now. Semi-permanent. No, he was blind. No, he was blind. That was I it. I think For- he gets it back later on in like a couple of series is his. Nope. No, yeah, because I thought he was dating one of the girls and then she dumps him because he's blind and then he gets it back. He was permanently blinded because you shouldn't have taken him off. No, no, but you're getting into the you're getting into this bit where I was starting to not watch it all the time. Oh, yeah, absolutely. It was one of the, it, it become by that point it because one of those things that it was I was watching it because it was on and I mm-hmm. didn't want to move. Oh, and it's old friends. <laughs> In... I'm just catching up on me old mates, but yeah, don't cut me eyes, me eyes, don't cut me eyes. You cannot see. <laughs> it didn't occur to it didn't it didn't occur to anybody to kind of like wipe the paint out of his face. No, run, so <laughs> <laughs> run which way? <laughs> I think there was a bit of that just, where he's running. Just towards. cut to a Ford Transit van. <laughs> <laughs> so I I saw a bit of uh, what's the name on that, and there's um some bloke was saying that he was um he remembers as a kid he would because he lived in newcastle then and he remembers being asked oh, so he, he got two days off school and then he ran around in the pissing wet and cold and got paid 15 quid to shoot paintballs <laughs> into ants <laughs> eyes <laughs> uh but yes i thought that was uh, i thought it was hilarious uh so the show has it's groundbreaking in November 1994, Biker Grove featured the first gay kiss on UK children's television. It broached the subject of coming out when Noddy Fishwick <laughs> kissed his close friend Gary Hendricks at the back of the cinema. Uh, it caused outrage in the British tabloids, as you'd expect, and calls for producer Matthew Robinson to be sacked. However, bizarrely, the Auntie Beeb, the BBC, absolutely backed them and uh, wouldn't wouldn't censor them anyway they completely supported them uh, they got loads of support from gay teenagers teachers and parents uh, according to a 2015 interview the producer kept every single complaint letter he got filed them all the way and it's a it's a matter of pride to him that he has those <laughs> which i, I think, think so it's brilliant i'm proud of the bbc for that <laughs> now i know i told you guys not to do any research on this but can tell you anyone tell me the connection between biker grove and giant robots. Giant robots. Um, giant robots. say, was there somebody in War of the Worlds? Not War of the Worlds, no. Iron Giant. <laughs> but no, but <laughs> <laughs> Biker Grove uh, gave actor Charlie Hunnam uh, his start in as an actor. He went on to play Raleigh in Pacific Rim. <laughs> oh, oh, my God. 
<laughs> yeah, I didn't. I, I never knew that. Oh my gosh! Really? You know, even when I was looking, I saw him do an interview, and I was thinking, "What the fuck's he doing on this?" <laughs> and then I was like, "Was he in bike?" He, he must was have been in later because I don't remember him being in bike grave. Yeah, but would we recognise a young Charlie Hunt? I could barely pick him out of a crowd now. Maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I think we would. What's his name? Charlie what? Hunnam. H-U-N-N-A-M. It's Raleigh. It's Raleigh from mm. Pacific Rim. Job. Uh, also, I mean, Ant and Deck were probably the most famous in the UK. Uh, Charlie Hunnam. Uh, most of the cast of uh, Emmerdale at one point. <laughs> um, is it Jill, Jill Kennedy? Jill um, Nicola? She's oh, quite famous uh, in Coronation Street and Oh, I can't remember her name. Nicola Dobson. Um yeah, something Ken- Oh, no, Jill Halfpenny. Something like that. D- that's it, that's it, that's it, Jill Halfpenny, yeah. Um and a glamour model called uh Francois Bouffal. I haven't looked her up them up. I don't know but um oh I do you know we didn't ask. Jeremy, what did you think of the uh the music? <laughs> what music? <laughs> <gasps> do, 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 do. Baker. Baker from like Baker. 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 Oh, it was a pathetic excuse for an intro. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I do, one of my notes. One of my notes is: Will somebody please take the keyboard off the sound guy? <laughs> what is this? My first note is: What is this theme that the nineties called for? <laughs> well, so the intro February looks like it was 80s. created on a Windows ninety eight. It's eighties. <laughs> Again, funny you should say that. Um, my last note is I used to play Sega Mega Drive games with the same graphics as these credits. <laughs> and, and music. <laughs> and music, yeah. A bit of 16-bit. <laughs> oh, and that was it. That was no other music. Biker Grove uh, was responsible for no less than five musical groups, which I am now going to list for your delectation. <laughs> uh, the first one, the obvious one, is PJ and Jun- Duncan who went on to become Ant and Deck, um, they did Let's Get Ready, Let's Get Ready, Let's Get Ready to Rumble. Rumble. Watch us wreck the mic. Watch us wreck the mic. Watch us wreck the mic. Psych. Psych. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, my God. In in an offside, uh, myself and an old office mate, we used to play, try and find a song to annoy the other one. They were little competitions, and Let's Get Ready to Rumble was usually my choice. (laughs) My first choice. (laughs) Uh... So Michelle Charles, under the name of Charlie, which was her character's name, uh, she released two singles. Uh, PJ and Duncan released an album, many singles. There was a band called Biker Groove. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> which was a girl band starring uh, one, two, three, three of them, uh, whose single, Love Your Sexy, reached number 47 in the UK God. charts. <laughs> Oh, that doesn't seem right. A bunch of teenage girls singing no. Love Your Sexy. That's just not right. Biker Groove evolved into a band called Crush, who reached, well, there was it, their single called Jellyhead reached uh, number 32, and Loved Up reached number 45 in the United States. Jesus. <laughs> okay, Battle of the Bands. This versus Gem and Holograms. <laughs> <laughs> Gem and Holograms. <laughs> oh, I, thought, I didn't realise Donna Air was in it. Um, so they were actually released in the States and Australia. And they, what is it, in Australia, they peaked at 32, number 32, and spent 23 weeks in the charts. Why? To go them. Uh, <laughs> Summer Matthews, a.k.a. Emma Miller, with a single Little Miss Perfect, and a band called Point Break. Uh, which included Brett Adams and David Oliver, who played Noddy and Marcus, who released their single uh, Freaky Freaky Time on Eternal Records. Have we covered another, apart from German Holograms, have we covered another show that had a pop group in it? Uh, uh, Terrorhawks. Minus Terrorhawks. Minus the, <laughs> that controversy. I'm sure, well, yeah, we must. We must well, uh, oh, no, we haven't since, done Since uh, Gem and Holograms, I feel like we did one that had age. A, we haven't done. Oh, we didn't Postman Pat have a song. Oh, uh, no, no. Um, what was it? The Beverly Hills Teens or whatever it was. Oh, God. Yeah, they had one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're right. <laughs> that was it. Yeah. My momentary lapse. This or, Be- this or Beverly Hills Teens. <laughs> I'd rather watch this. Although. I. I got bored about halfway through. Yeah, me too. And, and it was like, yeah, okay, just get on with it. 
I know I it's think... first. I know it's the first episode of the first series, and they're trying to introduce things. But it was like it started off okay, it was fine, and then it ended okay. But in the middle, it's just like get on with it. She's being a I bitch. Think, we get a, it. <laughs> it didn't help because we had to watch it in two parts. Yeah, and B. You had all that whole racist bit in the middle. Oh, yeah, we need to talk about that. That came out of nowhere. Well, yeah, it was, but it yeah. was, like, so easily dismissed. It, it, where did it come from? Because she... All right, there's a... I can't remember the name of the girl. Not Julie. Yorkie. No, <laughs> no, no, they call her... Yorkie. Oh, you're talking about... Um, it's Hayley... Not Hayley, because um, she does a weird thing. She does a weird jumpy thing, and I was like, what the fuck's with that? <laughs> Anyway, uh, our character Julie is everyone's kind of shunning her, and she says, "Oh, Haley, yeah, Haley." She's talking Hayley's to Haley, and Haley Hayley is black. Uh, so they're sitting, they're, they're, they're having, a, they're just having a chat, and then they have a. Oh, it's I can't remember what she says, but basically they have a little disagreement about tells how horrible. Her, tells and her she warns her, yeah, about guilt. Yeah, 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 and she just sends her, and then Julie goes, "Yeah, just go back where you came from." <laughs> She's like, whoa, why whoa, don't you just whoa, go back to where you came whoa, from? What the, where did that come from? I wasn't expecting that. No, but that's... I mean, props for the show for doing it. It just yeah. kind of felt like, oh, okay, we're, we're doing that. No, you've got to think. You're talking about, what, 80, <laughs> 90, that's what, 40 years ago? Nearly 40 years ago. Yeah, but it was 80s, deliberately done to, for controversy. Yeah, it but was in the 80s... Controversy. <laughs> In the eighties, shit like that was always you. That was kind of the crap that you, it, you know, if you were having an argument with somebody who was a different color to you, that was going to come up. So I, in the eighties, that wasn't a shock. It's because we're now in twenty whatever the bloody year is. <laughs> How much have you had to drink? <laughs> but it's you're talking it's nearly forty years ago, and now that is not acceptable. And if any of our kids did that, there would be repercussions. But what I found interesting was that the Northerners were defending the black lady, <laughs> not the above. <laughs> well, that's because that's to show. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know, I know. I'm joking. Yeah. <laughs> so point points to Biker Crow because I was genuinely shocked. Yeah. Like, whoa, whoa, you little shit! What the hell? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But I think that was to show her complete and utter... Yeah, it's just to show her overprivilege and the fact that yeah. you know, she doesn't care about other people. Yeah. Traditionally, child actors are not the best actors in the world. Hmm. How do you think this lot did? Not bad. I was going to say, I, was, I think they were all right. I think all of this lot, though, all came from that, the same drama academy, didn't they? The one that chucks out all the... There's like there is like a cup there's a couple of big drama academies that spews out child actors, and they all have like their hands. It's like they're not just actors; they can all do either a bit of singing or a bit of dancing or a bit of this. My 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 favorite bit, and, and it's not really as acting, uh, is when the Winston and Gill nick the bikes at the end, and they're riding around in circles on the grass, and they're like, "Yeah, we we're bad boys. We do this kind of thing all the time." Apart from Winston. Looked like he was about to shit himself. Yeah, <laughs> he looked so nervous riding that bike. But he was—it was that I am terrified, but I'm going to look like I'm hard. And yeah, <laughs> this isn't so that's me. exactly what he was <laughs> supposed to be doing anyway, wasn't he? Uh, not liking this. <laughs> he's supposed to be only about. Well, he's supposed to be what twelve, thirteen, thirteen, I think. Yeah, yeah. So if you're going to hang out with tough boy for fifteen-year-olds, well, yeah. Can I? Can I make a point? <laughs> don't know can, can you what is it with British kids shows British shows in general right from the 80s 90s before now they are all predominantly about people walking from one place to another <laughs> there is that's no, what it was, n- no that content is, <laughs> that is what it was like being a teenager in the 80s and yeah. 90s we walked everywhere <laughs> at least a half the episodes amount was just a sh- camera angles from like watching one person go over there and then cutting to some person th- going that way and it was just it was the same thing <laughs> but from different you people see, didn't you get the north south that 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 divide because Julie was driven everywhere mm-hmm. well, as yeah. a rich girl sure. from the southern whereas all the northern kids none of them were driven everywhere they had to walk everywhere or they got the train um, I mean yeah. y- 
Yeah, that wasn't quite the point I was making, but yeah. No, but I know. <laughs> I see I what know. you mean. <laughs> yeah. But that, in the 80s, that's what we did. Mm. Although, apart from Hayley, who does little weird jumps as she's walking up the road. <laughs> <laughs> it was just like, oh, we're going to take a shot of them in the car. Yeah. Then we're going to take a shot of them getting out of the car. Then we're going to take a shot of them going over there. And they say <laughs> nothing meaningful. <laughs> the whole thing. There was a, yeah, there was a lot of filler. Yeah. yeah, and it's not just this. It was like in same in Grange Hill. It was the same in any of the British like the live action stuff that we've watched. It's to make it realistic. Whereas I these think it's days, just cheap. <laughs> well, no, it's not these days. Your attention spans are all about by Nat's willies, so you have to be spoon fed it. So you can't watch somebody get in a car and drive twenty minutes up the road. Or yeah, you. <laughs> not you. <laughs> your generation, or it's not just your generation. Everybody. <laughs> they they can't watch somebody. They just need to see somebody get in the car and then get out the car. We don't need to see the whole 20 minutes drive. There could be some interesting conversation in between the two, but they're not going to show that. Yeah, like, it would have made sense if they put some dialogue, but they said the same thing they said the last five times, like, <laughs> oh, she doesn't want to be here because she's posh and northern, and it's the, uh, she's posh and southern, and it's the north, and they're all... They're all, thir- it's a third world country, so they're all, like, <laughs> primitives and haven't discovered fire yet. <laughs> this is what it seemed like it was just in, in, in it was the same thing over and over and it was just them walking from one place to another like it's the same thing in adult things I think back at that time you know like if you watch like Holby City or something they're walking from like their car to the to the hospital and that's it <laughs> five minutes of surgery and that's it it's because your your visual media you're spoiled by your visual media I think it's just poorly made <laughs> in that regard. I think maybe that was the first episode. It's just how they used to do it. I think, you, I think you've got a point, but I think it was just the style of TV making. Yeah. Because I, it's, it's it, very it was, British as well. Lim- they would have had a limited number of cameras. Yeah. Um, how are we going to get a good shot from this? We need or how are we going to pad out 20 minutes when we're just trying to tell like a natural story? Yeah. When they're not like setting it up, they're very much trying to ground it in the fact that it's... It's just something that happens day to day. I think also this is like, technically, this is the pilot. Yeah. So, um, I mean, I don't remember there being a lot more of that. I do remember them like walking to school or walking to bike. Well, it wouldn't be to school, but walking to the shop or walking to the pub or walking to bike or road. And they'd be talking, but it's what they're talking about that's important. Mm. Yeah, but it's always really quiet. (laughs) You can't hear what they're saying because they're speaking non-English and they're also talking in a it's really quiet way. non-English! <laughs> I can't say that, Jeremy! If you'd like to make a complaint, you can contact us at serialviewing at gmail.com. It's not non-English! In fact, it's probably more English than what you're bloody speaking, you French Nancy. I feel like I could get, I could get a job on top of you. <laughs> <laughs> Again, if you'd like to make a complaint, you can reach us at serialviewing at gmail.com. Yeah. <laughs> no, no. Castle. Obviously, I, I quite like this sort of accent, and I thought it was quite nice that they focused on a... almost like a... Minor- Don't say third world. There's no, no. Not a minority. <laughs> like a minority not- culture of England. <laughs> Like not like, not like a. Um, but you know, like you know, a specific culture of like Newcastle and the the north, and like it wasn't focused on the south, and it wasn't focused on you know Grange Hill, BBC like stiff mustache sort of thing. It was very. I agree. I agree. Very youthful. As someone who grew up in the east of England, southeast of England, um, that was the first time I had heard not the first time I'd heard that accent, but in a piece of media aimed at me. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I did, and at the time it didn't. I just found it interesting. It didn't well, bother me. yeah. To be honest, we got if apart from that, you got Coronation Street or mm. Brookside. Um, yeah. You anything else that was um, south of the North South Divide? No, north of the North, north South of Divide. The <laughs> north of the border, <laughs> you, you didn't get it um, unless it was local. And it, yeah, so mainstream media, mm-hmm. it just wasn't. So it was, yeah, it was a big, um, it was a big thing. And as as I said, as much as it was weird and it was a little bit lame, but everyone watched it. Everyone talked about it. Mm-hmm. Everyone mm-hmm. was like, um, and I don't, and of course, sitting here thinking about it, did everybody, those pink and white sports bags, 
were they wearing them before or were they wearing them because Biker Grove? As much as I don't want Biker Grove to be a trendsetter, it's possible. Yeah. Although she does mention fucking Bross. <laughs> when Bross. I thought she said Bross. No, no. She, when said she, me- <laughs> she mentions he's as good looking as Matt Goss and he was Aye. one of the brothers in Bross. Aye. And I think I was probably the only person in Hingenbrook School that did not like Bross. Was in Bross the, the one that was like I was the say, one you wonder in and my they, went, year. they went crazy? No, they, no, 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 they no, were no, huge. They, was, they uh, were huge, was three of them. but they were spoon proper, like, manufactured. They were everywhere. Pop. Yeah, manufactured, yeah. They there were three everywhere. brothers. Of course, one when of the brothers is much I, better at acting as a vampire be now. <laughs> So the youth club, the actual building that is seen on screen is known as the Mitre. Uh, It used to be a nightclub and a pub, which is actually mentioned in the show a couple of times. Um, After the success of the first series, the first six episodes, uh, the Mitre was actually bought by the BBC's London property department, who then gave uh, Zenith Television a permanent license to to film the scenes there. So it was actually owned by the BBC. (laughs) Which I didn't even know they had a London property to So Biker Grove was BBC? Yes. Yeah. So they did Grange Hill for the Southern Kids and Biker Grove for the Northern Kids. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, Grange Hill was a, a few, at least a decade no, earlier, isn't it? No, 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 no. Grange Hill was still running at this time. Yeah. Yes, I know, but, but it, it started. started the 70s, oh, yeah, it started in the 70s, yeah. Late 70s. By the time this came along, it was well established. But... I was always much more of a fan of Biker Groove. I watched both. Okay, now you may remember, listeners and and fellow presenters, that I we bumped an episode for this because I found something out about Biker Grove that I ju- I had to. Was talk- that not the Riley thing? Right. No, 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 no. Really? Oh no. Oh no, 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 no. So I just have bef- before we get onto that, and I and I can blow your minds with this. Um, I have one quick question. In a straight up American fifties uh, gang fight rumble kind of deal. Biker Grove or the Grange Hill kids? Who's, wa- yeah, who's, who's walking? Who's walking out of there victorious? Oh, the Biker Grove kids, easy. They've all got knives <laughs> under their, under their, <laughs> under their jack pockets. Oh God, you're so like. <laughs> I'm going to bring so you up like this. For this. <laughs> Once again, that's serialviewing at gmail.com. <laughs> I have to agree with Jeremy that the Biker Grove kids... Mind you, you know, Gil's, Gil, you got Gil and Cass out there having in a scrap. I actually... Oh, no, see, I put my money on Tucker. No, there's that some... Lot. The Grange Hill has got quite a lot of rough end of London <laughs> yeah. in there. They're not I all... feel like they're older than the Grange Hill kids. Hill Rowley, Rowley would just sit on them. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. I'm going to change my mind. Zamo so- would just sell them drugs and then, yeah, then that's I'm, it. They'd all I, die. I'm, I'm sorry, Biker Grove kids. I think Grange Hill would kick your ass. <laughs> <laughs> So who do you reckon, Jen? Grange Hill? I, d- I don't know. I think it what would be pretty What is this pertaining even. to? Oh, this is, this is nothing. This is just something I just thought about. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I think it would be pretty even because, yeah, you got, like Jeremy said, actually, the Biker Grove kids seem to be older, uh, more worldly wise, probably. They're not as... Um, well, they're all like 15, protected. Right? Yeah, but the Yeah, but you've still got some of the other ones, like... Um, they look bigger. Spuggy. Spuggy. <laughs> and Winston, they're all the younger kids. Um, yeah, but they're savage. <laughs> God, thank you. You're really not helping yourself. Hang on, wait, no, no, that wasn't the right. That wasn't. That wasn't the coaches. They, they are. They look. They, they're both uh-huh. savage. Anyway, feral kids roaming the streets. I know what you're Grain chill. There is a lot. You know, you've got the poorer end of the spectrum. There are a lot. You know, so I think it's going to be pretty evenly matched. On, I'm, I don't think there's going to be a very, very. Very uh, neutral of you. <laughs> Bear with me. So Biker Grove ran from 1989 to 2006. As we've already discussed, it covered some very serious issues, some comedic ones, but some very serious issues such as drug addiction, child abuse, abortion, homelessness, teen pregnancy, uh, homophobia, uh, had the first gay kiss, had many deaths, uh, some tragic deaths like um, Jeff who fell off the roof, got blown up. So, all in all, this was a serious show. Do you agree? Yeah. Yes. Yep. So, this was, a ser- this was a serious show. This was taking after, like, gritty soap operas. They were trying to present a more realistic um, face to the world, to kids. This is what life is like, kids. And I applaud them for that. So, 
it was cancelled in 2006, and they decided to ignore all of that. <laughs> and in the very last episode, uh, all the kids at the youth club, they become aware that they might actually all be fictional characters. Oh, for God's sake. <laughs> 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 that their world is fictional, and that the, uh, the almighty scriptwriters have decided to end their show. But the scriptwriters have given them a parting gift. They have left a stack of magic script paper where anything that the kids write on the paper will happen right in front of them. The idea is that they can write their own happy endings before the show is finished for good. And they do. They do this. They, 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 this the whole episode is them coming to terms with the fact that they're not real. Oh. <laughs> they pulled so, a full holy grail. They the fuck? Yes, that's exactly what I said. I read it and I kind of sat back and went, just, what the fuck? Why? Okay, I mean, it, it gets better. It gets better. So they all write their own. Oh, I'm good. Away, oh, hey, man. I'm going to have a happy. I'm going to ride off on a pony. It's going to be great. So they do that. So they That's have these amazing. They, they, have, they start having these. They're writing off. Oh, I'm going to. I'm going to go find the my parents, and I'm going to make a reconnect to this, and everything's going to be wonderful. Apart from two of the younger children, they write in a ton of dynamite and try to try to blow up the youth club, and then end credit. <laughs> that is a holy grail ending so let's just wrap up like decades worth of <laughs> serious really good hard series. work where they established characters and yeah you're all not real <laughs> why did you not get us to watch that episode literally an explosive <laughs> ending literally, well possibly <laughs> it is the most I would like to have a chat <laughs> with whoever greenlit the idea. Well, I mean, it's going to be a challenge to end something like that, but you could do a nice yeah. feel-good episode where you kind of wrap everything up and uh, yeah. the Grove closes down and, oh, thanks, the Grove. Oh, we've all made friends. Yes, in, and, in and some way. Been, nah, fuck it, let's just go yeah, mental. <laughs> I respect them for that in some way, for like just deciding that, like, uh, every, every soppy thing. Friends did that. We don't need to do that. I don't. It is an absolute... <laughs> Cop out, <laughs> and they were but just. It is a bit, I they, yeah. I think they were working on the basis. Of, ah, nobody's fucking watching it anymore. <laughs> like they could have just done something like, "Oh, it's burnt down." Yeah, and like you know, they'll they'll open all a new one, like a new one that's like well funded. Oh, they could have done a Goonies ending where all the kids stand around and say, "Oh, where are we going to find the money?" Oh, I found these jewels. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, well, something like that. Do -do 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 -do. For, fuck it, from a pirate. Why not? It's still yeah. better than we're not really real. <laughs> they could have done different endings. They could have done literally anything apart from, yeah, you're all not real. Oh my God, I'm not real. <laughs> Here's some magic script paper. Absolute. It's just, it, it baffles yeah. my mind. It was, it was such a what the fuck moment. Because <laughs> I remember Biker Grove. I, I remember the early years. I remember it being very serious and with some annoying kids in it, but that's kids TV for you. And then, really? I'm a, personally, I'm offended. <laughs> you sound offended. <laughs> it's, it's ridiculous. It's laziness. It's terrible, terrible. I can only, I'm going to give them the benefit of that they just assumed that by this point it was got cancelled. Nobody's bloody watching the show. We'll do whatever the hell we want. And then they all got drunk and wrote the script. <laughs> so, Henry, what was yeah. this monumental thing that you found out? Oh, shut up. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> <laughs> that was it. <gasps> yeah. Oh. <laughs> oh, you're <laughs> underwhelmed. A little bit. Uh, I thought it was going to be then... something like Ant and Deck, like, I don't know, killed a kid. Or something. <laughs> There's a shooting at Biker Grove. Yeah. A, bl a blind Ant McParlane kicks the door around down with two uh, paintball guns. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, take, I'll take you all with me. <laughs> Couldn't see this <laughs> coming. <laughs> and then, no, yeah, so, yeah, so imagine this, imagine this. The, the, <laughs> the door's kicked open. There's, there's this bl blind <laughs> Ant and take, stand there and he's got two paintball guns and he just starts start shooting into the room and then it cuts to another angle and he's, open, he's, he's kicked open the door to the supply cupboard and he's just standing there like, shooting the wall. <laughs> Just no, I vaguely. It would have still been a better ending than this. <laughs> uh. No, I vaguely remember. I think Declan steals Ant's girlfriend or something because he's blind, so he doesn't see it coming. Oh. <laughs> Damn it, you've been quite literally. Blindness is no joke. 
Right, that was Biker Grove. I can't, yeah. I can't expend any more energy on it. We should stop with now. Well, <laughs> Jesus, this is going to be a nightmare to edit as is. Why, yeah, you man. <laughs> well, you're going to have to go into hiding while most of the North comes after you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, Je- Jennifer, uh, we'll start with you. Uh, please give Biker Grove a rating out of 10. Uh, it's going to get a six. A six? That was confident and... Okay. Why, why six? Because, well, I remember enjoying it as a kid, and it's actually quite compelling. You got kind of like sucked into each of the kids' stories, and you know, some of the kids were like me. I could relate. I could relate to some of the kids. Um, some of them were completely alien, but I knew people that were like that. Um, I would have loved to have there been some sort of youth club that was like that. I mean, I suppose I had cadets that was better but um jeremy solid five a solid five that's average dust what i'm impressed that's quite <laughs> high ah, it was I, I had a turning point halfway through the episode you can see in my notes that it like about a third up it says not once has anyone established what the show is yet and with seven minutes in <laughs> um and then it, it gets like a couple of lines later it just says that actually it's starting to change my mind and i think like it was it was the the some of the stuff they were tackling with so st- i can't remember what specifically but just it was just it reminded me heavily of grange hill and i think the fact that it was a bit more hip and the fact that it was set in the north which was a bit more like uh different it was different yeah, different was, yeah, yeah like um and interesting i guess you know like it was a bit more something that had never really been done so i think yeah but so a six it was from- also boring <laughs> <laughs> yeah the middle it really sagged in the middle so a six from jennifer a five from jeremy and a 3.6 from me why uh, do you go for the random numbers because i have i have I have a, a formula, which I'm not going to bother explaining because <laughs> it doesn't really make sense. Um, I remember enjoying it a little bit when I was a teenager. Um, I appreciate the way that they dealt with a lot of the issues, but I just couldn't take the kids seriously. <laughs> yeah. At the time and now, and it did sag in the middle. I don't really care. <laughs> I don't really want to watch anymore. <laughs> I'm going to call BS. You I, loved it I, when you were a teenager. Yeah. Okay. Do you know what? I'll give you one of those things that there were certain storylines that people would come in and talk about at school and then, oh, yeah, okay, I'll check it out. Also, it made your favourite song ever. <laughs> Let's get ready. Let's get ready to rumble. Um, them, did you watch any more of Grain Chill, Henry? Yes, I've watched quite a bit, actually. Oh, <laughs> you watch that drivel and you won't watch I this. like Grange Hill. It's the same show. <laughs> well, that's probably why I don't need to watch this one. That's fair. No, this is different. It's the same. It's different. It's exactly the same. It's I see not. no difference between it, except Your it's not set in a school. Different. Oh, oh. <laughs> they could set it in <laughs> South Africa and it would be the same. <laughs> South Africa? Yeah, I want to see that South African Grange Hill. Do you know? I don't know. <laughs> I, I think I just relate to it more. Being Biker Grove, it just seems to make sense more. It's got your Grange northern Hill. heart. No, it's not even that. It just mean it just seems to tap into the teenager a bit more than Grange Hill. Just seems to be. I think how Gra- my mum and dad were when they went to school. Grange Hill suffered from know. the fact that it started in the late seventies. Yeah. I just feel it's it, the same stuff that they get up to. It seemed exactly the same. I don't know. Maybe if I watch more of it. I don't know. Grain Chill, it was controversial if they smoked behind the, bar, uh, behind the bike sheds <laughs> or if they swore to the teacher. And when I say swear, they told him to crap off or bugger off. <laughs> I don't mean like proper swear. Fudge off, sir. <laughs> yeah, well, that wasn't even a... I can't even... I doubt, I doubt they even said that in Biker Grove. That was Biker Grove. I'm cutting you off there. That was Biker Grove. <laughs> Thank you very much for listening. Uh, can anyone remember what, you, what we're watching next week? Well, you've messed with it so now. Yeah, is it mine? Uh, uh, we are watching the much more innocent Barbar the Elephant. Oh, yes, I oh, love that... Barbar the Elephant. Oh, this is my childhood as well. 
<laughs> so join us for that. Um, we did get a, another comment on one of our YouTube videos uh, from a friend of the show, Paul. Hello, Paul. How are you? I hope you're not um, Northern. <laughs> well, you know Paul, so you know he's not. <laughs> okay. Uh, Paul said he just he listened to the Captain Scarlet episode. If you haven't done it, go do it. Uh, he just wanted to let us know that the start, the voiceover at the start of the ed- episodes is by a chap called Ed Bishop, who's also the voice of Captain Blue. He also plays Commander Ed Straker in the Jerry Anderson show UFO, which was uh, human actors and Captain Scarlet type models. Huh. And he even started that comment with nerd note. So thank you for your nerd note, Paul. We appreciate that. <laughs> if you'd like Always to get in- love a good nerd note. Absolutely. Thank you, Paul. Uh, if you'd like to get in touch with us, uh, you can do what Paul did and leave us a note on one of our um, YouTube videos. Do it. Do it. Or you can email Jeremy, uh, serialviewing at gmail.com <laughs> if you'd like to make a complaint. <laughs> yeah. <complaints. laughs> or you can leave... <laughs> There's a contact form on our website, serialviewing.com, or you can leave us a voicemail. If you leave us a voicemail... We will play it on the show. Even if you're having a go at Jeremy, we will play it on the show. Inbox 1000. <laughs> Just people you can't understand. Do it. So join us for Bar by the Elephant. <laughs> Wait, you still having a go at my <laughs> Just look at it there, lie, from man. somehow. <laughs> Just let it lie. <laughs> I don't understand how you can't understand them. They're just talking yeah. like this all the time. Oh my God. <laughs> Like whatever. Like <laughs> Prove my point. <laughs> anyway, thank you very much for joining us, and we will see you from Far Far the Elephant. <laughs> Say goodbye, people. Bye. Me eyes. Bye. Me eyes. <laughs> Bye.